Hello, this is Sabrina Gonzalez Pesterski, here with you from Lisbon, Portugal, as we embark on a 10 month journey around Africa, reenacting Vasco da Gama's voyage. I will be sailing in an exact replica of the Seio Gabriel to Calicut, India, using the 79 page account of Alvera Bello, who was a member of da Gama's crew. So come on, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Vasco da Gama was born in 1460. Originally, King Joa II chose da Gama's father, Estavio, to go on a journey to India, but he died before he was able to do so. Later, King Manuel I of Portugal commissioned Vasco da Gama to go on an expedition from Lisbon to India. Keep in mind that the Suez Canal didn't exist until the 1800s. This meant that in order for da Gama to get from Lisbon to India, he would have to go around the entire continent of Africa. Boats at the time could only average 10 knots. At this rate, it took da Gama 10 months to reach Calicut, not to mention the voyage back. Vasco da Gama's fleet consisted of four ships, the Seo Gabriel, the Seo Rafael, the Berrio, and a storage ship named the Seo Martin. The Seo Gabriel was a carrack commanded by Vasco da Gama. It had a crew of 150 people and weighed 178 tons. It was 8.5 meters wide and 27 meters long. The Seo Rafael was commanded by Paulo da Gama, Vasco da Gama's brother. This ship was later burned because there weren't enough crew members for all four ships, after many of them died from scurvy. Nicola Cuola commanded the Burio, which was later known as the Seo Miguel. Goncala Nunes was the commander of the storage ship in the fleet, the Seo Martin. Da Gama's journey to Asia had two purposes. The first was to find another trade route to bring spices from India. The other purpose was to find Christians in India and help spread Christianity. Since da Gama was from Portugal, a Catholic country, and he lived during the time of the Reformation, spreading the ideas of Christianity and baptizing new people was very important. Vasco da Gama and his fleet set sail on July 8, 1497. It's July 8, 2005, and we're just departing from Lisbon, Portugal, located at 38 degrees north, 8 degrees west. The weather is fine, and it is a good day to start our voyage. Exactly 508 years ago, Vasco da Gama began his journey to Asia, leaving from Port Ristolio, as we have just done. It is the 15th of July, and we're just passing the Canary Islands. Vasco da Gama did not stop here because many explorers had already been there and he wanted to visit new places. We are at S. Jago and it's July 20th, 2005. We finally reached the first stop on Vasco da Gama's journey. Both da Gama and Christopher Columbus stopped here to get meat, water, and wood. S. Jago is located at 14 degrees north, 23 degrees west. It has a warm climate with little precipitation. It should be about 78 degrees Fahrenheit today. It only rains 0.3 inches in July, so it is very unlikely that it will rain while we are here. We have traveled 1,734.7 nautical miles so far. The Cape Verde Islands are very different now than they were when Vasco da Gama visited them. In the 1400s, Cape Verde Islands were nearly uninhabited. The terrain here is very rugged. Sharp cliffs jut out along the coastline, and white foamy water covers any sand that may exist below the cliffs. There isn't much vegetation, and most of the land is very rocky. Although the geography is the same, many towns can be found on this island. Da Gama would be surprised to see the cities here now. Cape Verde gained its independence in 1975 and now has a democratic government, one of the most stable in all of Africa. One problem that Cape Verde is facing is deforestation due to popular use of wood for fuel. Since da Gama came here to stock up on items he would need for his journey, we will be bringing back meat, water, and wood. It's the 3rd of August and, according to our GPS, we appear to be going to Rio de Janeiro. We just left Estiago four days ago and originally planned a straight path from Estiago to St. Helena Bay, which would have only been 3,710 nautical miles. But, like da Gama, we are being pushed by seasonal winds towards South America. It is impossible for us to fight these winds. Hey, 
We might have GPS, but we don't have motors. It's been two months now, and we're in the middle of the Atlantic, heading towards Rio de Janeiro. The prevailing winds are from the southeast, so we weren't able to go down the African coast. It's been three months now, and we're still far away from Africa. At least we seem to be heading towards the coast, though. But it's out of sight. It's November 7th, 2005, and we have finally spotted Africa again. Unfavorable winds kept us sailing in the Atlantic for months. They pushed our boat very close, but just out of sight of Brazil. We can tell from our GPS that we are now nearing South Africa. It's November 8th. Well, we finally made it to St. Helena Bay, located in South Africa. There are long mountain ridges along the coast to the south. The bay is flatter, however, and there is a beach on the coastline. In the more populous regions of the area, there are many buildings, some older, others modern. This leg of our journey was 5,769.1 nautical miles long. St. Helena Bay is located at 32 degrees south, 18 degrees east. It should be about 65 degrees Fahrenheit today. It only rains about an inch in November, so it is not very likely that we will be seeing some rain while we are here. South Africa used to be divided into tribes, but now has a Republican government. For a while, South Africa was controlled by the English and Dutch. Apartheid ended in the 1990s after international pressure. It's the 16th of November, and we have been traveling up the Santiago River and are still in South Africa. The winds have calmed down a bit, and the weather is still rather cold, about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. The Santiago River is at 32 degrees south, 18 degrees east. When da Gama came to St. Helena Bay, he found the Santiago River, which is also known as the Great Berg River. The tribes that lived in this region during da Gama's time did not welcome him, and they fought in a small battle. The people here have been very nice to us, so that's a good change. When Vasco da Gama went along this route, he noted that there were many birds here, similar to those found in Portugal. We will be bringing back one of these birds with us for the rest of our journey. We'll be leaving this region of South Africa later today. Well, it's the 18th of November, and we have spotted the Cape of Good Hope. We just passed the Cape of Good Hope, and it's November 22nd. Sandy beaches line the coast, and huge cliffs jut out above them. Da Gama and his crew were nervous when they sailed here because of various legends and also rough tide. Tonight, we will reach our next port. On this exact day, 508 years ago, Vasco da Gama headed into uncharted territory. We are now on the eastern coast of South Africa, just past the Cape, and it's November 24, 2005. It is still cold this time of year, about 65 degrees today. It rains about 2.2 inches in November here, so we could possibly see some rain. We are at 34 degrees south, 24 degrees east, and have sailed 482.6 nautical miles from St. Helena. Along this coastal region, there are many caves, which were once inhabited by the native Khoi Khoi of this country. We will collect a few artifacts, such as some reed mats, that were made by descendants of these tribes. Today is November 25, 2005. While we continued up the coast 103 nautical miles from our last port, which we only spent a few hours at, we noticed a small island that was crowded with seals, located at 33 degrees south, 26 degrees east. We will stay here today. What is strange is that this very same island was covered in seals and birds when da Gama came here in the 1400s. This island is very rocky with no vegetation. Nothing much has changed. In fact, accounts written by one of da Gama's crew members talk about how they came to this island and shot the seals for fun. We won't be hurting any seals, although we'll be taking one with us for the rest of the journey. Well, it's the 8th of December and we're battling a large storm. Da Gama experienced a similar storm, and this is where one of the ships was lost, and then later, surprisingly, returned. We went along the coast for 673 Point one nautical miles until we reach the Copper River in Mozambique. It is less mountainous along this coast in this region. There is a fair amount of vegetation, and although there are some beaches, portions of the coast are rocky. 
The Copper River is located at 25 degrees north, 0 degrees east, and has a warmer climate than our last port, with average temperatures in December at around 78 degrees Fahrenheit. It rains about 6.9 inches in January, so there is a good chance that we may have some precipitation. Temperatures can be as high as the mid-90s during the summer. Mozambique has a Republican government. There was a civil war a while ago that was settled in 1992. This, along with the drought, caused many people to move to the coastal region. Mozambique's geography consists of lowlands along the coast, plateaus in the northwest, and mountains in the western region. The storm is over and we will be staying here from the 10th to the 15th of January. There are many more towns here than there were during da Gama's voyage. However, the geography is the same and so are many festivals. During their festivals, the people here wear feathers around their bodies and dance to music. We will be getting some water from here for the rest of our journey, as da Gama did when he came here. When Vasco da Gama visited the Copper River, he noticed that many of the people wore copper ornaments. I will bring back a few of these ornaments. We traveled slowly up the Mozambique coast for 570.5 nautical miles. Today is January 23, 2006. As da Gama did, we will be spending 32 days along the Zambezi River here in Kuala Main, Mozambique, located at 18 degrees south, 36 degrees east. The average daily temperature is about 81 degrees Fahrenheit. It rains about 9 inches in January. It will probably rain a little bit while we are here. When Vasco da Gama came here, he noted how it was a low, wet region and that the trees grew closely together. This is true today, although the region is more populous. We will be bringing back some artifacts from the tribes that used to live here and probably met da Gama along his journey and also be getting some more water from the rest of our journey, as da Gama probably did. It's February 24th, 2006, and we are heading eastward. It's the 1st of March, and we have spotted land again after heading east. We are heading to the island of Mamuzuzu. When da Gama came here, one of his ships hit ground. This time, we'll be careful. Today, March 2nd, 2006, we dropped anchor at Mamuzuzu Island, which is at 12 degrees south, 45 degrees east, after sailing 583.7 nautical miles. Mamunduzu has a tropical climate with average temperatures in February at around 82 degrees Fahrenheit. It doesn't rain much here in February, only about three times. The island is lush and green. The many hills are covered in trees. Along one of the inlets is a large street. Da Gama would have been surprised to see all of the cars and buildings here now. Although the geography is the same, there are more people here now than there were before. Da Gama came here and found that they had a lot of gold. We will be bringing some back with us. We found that the people here were very friendly, but since Da Gama didn't like the fact that they were Muslim, they had a battle. The sultan of this region originally gave Da Gama gifts. However, after the sultan found out that Da Gama's mission was to convert people to Christianity, he ordered Vasco da Gama captured and killed. Luckily, da Gama escaped in time. Sometimes the evil eye is stronger than the sword. We left Memendozu two days ago, and it's the 4th of April. We are currently sailing along the Tanzanian coast. There are sandy beaches along this coast, and the area is lush and covered in vegetation. Today is April 6, 2006, and we are at Zanzibar, Tanzania, located at 6 degrees south, 39 degrees east, after sailing 585.5 nautical miles from Memunzozu. The average rainfall here is about 10.6 inches in April. The temperature during this time of year is about 79 degrees Fahrenheit. The tide is rather rough here. When Vasco da Gama came here, the tide carried one of his ships onto the shore and then brought it back into deeper water. Tanzania used to consist of just tribes, but they now have set up a Republican government. For a while, there were problems with elections in that there was only one party. This has recently changed. The landscape is very similar now as it was during da Gama's time, aside from the many towns. Along the coastline, the land is rather flat. It then rises to a plateau in the center and is more mountainous 
it to the north and south. Kilimanjaro is the tallest point in Tanzania at 5,895 meters. One change in the landscape is the amount of trees. Tanzania is currently facing deforestation problems, along with endangered wildlife due to illegal hunting. Another problem Tanzania is facing is that of AIDS. There are 1.6 million people who are living with AIDS in Tanzania. The marketplace here is similar to the way it probably was when Nagama came here. There are many more buildings, however, and the people here wear modern clothing, such as pants and shirts, instead of tribal outfits. We will be leaving Zanzibar tomorrow. We are now at Mombasa, Kenya, and it's April 7th. We've traveled 148.6 nautical miles to get here. Kenya has a Republican government nowadays, but the region was mainly inhabited by tribes and small kingdoms when Dagama came here. Kenya recently had problems with their presidential election. From 1969 to 1982, there was only one political party. The terrain here consists of plains along the coastal region and becomes more mountainous further inland. Mombasa is located at 4 degrees south, 39 degrees east. Mombasa has a warm climate with maximum temperatures in April at around 86.7 degrees Fahrenheit. It is about 80 degrees today. On average, it rains about 7.2 inches in April. We might see some rain here. The water here is pure blue and the coast is lined with sandy beaches. Mombasa is a major tourist attraction in Africa. Dagama would definitely be surprised to see the towns here and the many houses and world-class hotels along the coast. When Dagama came here, the king gave him cloves and pepper. I will be taking some back with us for the rest of the journey. We will be leaving Mombasa tonight, just after one day, like Dagama did. Dagama left because he got into a fight. It's April 8, 2006, and we have spent nine months on this journey so far. Today, we are at Malindi, Kenya, located at 3 degrees south, 40 degrees east. After sailing 51.9 nautical miles from Mombasa, we will be staying here for nine days, and the weather is expected to stay warm with calm winds. The average daily temperature in Malindi during April is about 81 degrees Fahrenheit. The people in Malindi were very nice to Dagama, and they were allies of his for years. More towns have developed in this area, but the geography is basically the same. The region is lush and green, and there are long beaches along the coast. The most important part about Dagama's visit to Malindi was that the people from Malindi taught the Portuguese how to navigate better at night using a tool called a camel. A camel was a parallelogram, three inches by six inches, with a string with nine knots placed at measured intervals passing through the center. This string was held by the navigator's teeth at one end and by his hand at the other. The lower edge of the parallelogram was put on the horizon. It was then moved towards the navigator until the north star touched the top of the parallelogram. The navigator could tell how far north or south he was by looking at what knot the parallelogram was placed at when the top of it touched the north star. I will bring back one of these to add to my collection facts from Dagama's journey, since it is the most important thing that Dagama brought back from his trip. Well, it's April 17th, 2006, and we are sailing to Calicut. With the current winds, it should take about 20 days to reach Calicut, which is 2,300.3 nautical miles away. It's May 7th, 2006, and we're in Calicut, India, also known as Kidoki. It's been nearly 10 months and our journey is finally over. We have traveled approximately 13,000 nautical miles. Not all of Vasco da Gama's crew was able to make it this far. Thank you for joining me on this exciting journey. Well, I'll be flying back to Lisbon. See you next time.